Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Uh, yes, let's proceed. I approve Yes. Okay. Um, this morning I got a call from my client, one of the JJ banker, uh, who informed me that the authorities had told him he was being discharged and they were going to be taking him home. I told that uh, he should wait for me and he should not agree to go into their vehicle to be taken home. Uh, if they wanted to escort us to his home, that would be fine, but I would take him. So he said that is what he would do. I then proceeded to minor so-called hospital in order to go and collect him. Only to find that he was not there. I tried to ask where he was. I was not being given uh, the information. Uh, but then, luckily, uh, somebody then rang and said that, in fact, he had been taken to command center uh, there next to his cancer camp. And that's where he was. I then dashed there. And uh, after negotiation, they allowed that I could go and be with him. Uh, he had refused to uh, start answering the question without my being present. God wanted me to start asking questions. And they knew full well that he is represented and that I am a lawyer and I have my numbers. But in spite of that, they wanted to start uh, questioning him and taking statements from him without us being there. Uh, we then went into the, into the, a room where nine policemen, or at least the claims policemen, because only two of them identified themselves. The others said, no, we don't need to identify ourselves, that's no natural policemen. And so I do not know whether they were policemen, whether they were from special branch, or whether they were cadres. Nobody knows. Um, they then interviewed him past lunchtime into the afternoon. Thereafter, they said he holds on, they want to take statements from his wife. And they started taking statements from the wife. Round about uh, after 17 hours, uh, the, the, one of his sisters came in and said, in the room where he was waiting, two policemen had come saying that they are taking him away. And uh, naturally he resisted that. I came out there and they said, no, they are taking him, they, they have to take him to uh, force headquarters for one or two things. They did not define what those one or two things are. So I said, well, he's required there. I can bring him in my vehicle uh, to for headquarters. We see what they are wishing to clear up. But they said, no, he has to go in their vehicle. Um, I then said that uh, he cannot go in their vehicle. Uh, because he has to have somebody with him. He will only go in the vehicle with the wife, and if one of the wives is allowed to travel with him. They said yes, and uh, as a result of that, I started going to my vehicle. The wife was headed to their vehicle uh, with him. Uh, and then, apparently, uh, when they did reach there, they stopped the wife from getting in, they abandoned him into the vehicle, closed the door and sped off. 
um, I rushed to where my car is, got in, tried to follow them, but they were really sleeping, I lost them. So I went to Ford's headquarters where they had said they were taking him. But we found that at Ford's headquarters, there was no sign of him. There was actually nobody there. Uh, the place was closed. So this was now uh, close to 18 hours, if not after 18. Um, we then uh, started scratching our heads as to where he could be. And we started asking people to go to various police stations around the city. And uh, eventually, somebody said he has been brought to Kawata uh, police station. Um, and then we started to go there so that we could go and uh, see what the situation was at Kawata uh, police station. Uh, however, soon thereafter, we got another call that he had actually collapsed and uh, he was being taken to hospital. And uh, apparently they then dashed him to Minor Soko Hospital. We went to Minor Soko Hospital uh, and again I was not allowed to have access. Uh, I was totally refused access. And luckily, uh, one of his sisters was allowed access, and later on, another one came, she was also allowed access. But I, the lawyer, was not allowed to have access. Now, I got in information from uh, one of the sisters that, in fact, uh, when he got, after he collapsed at Kawata and they, they brought him to uh, Minor Soko, he did have uh, some uh, tips and currently he is unconscious. Uh, so I'm very worried and what is also extremely worrying is that this is a person who has in the last one week been abducted three times and the psychiatrist at Minor Soko had stated as uh, they were discharging him this morning, that he has got uh, acute stress and he needs to be in an environment where he will not be stressed. Yet they took him from morning to late afternoon, getting into the evening. No food was given to us as we were there, he didn't eat anything this morning. So it is no wonder that he didn't collapse. And right now, we're still trying to see whether we can get hold of the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Home Affairs because we are told that he is the one who can allow us to see him. So we are being held back from performing our duty as lawyers by the Ministry of Home Affairs. And the life of our client is... Yeah. The other thing is, we do not know what could have happened in between him being taken from um, the command center to Kawata. At command center, he was, although weak, he was alive and well. Now he is unconscious after they had him in their arms alone. It's the first time they had him just there themselves with him without the rest of the family ever since uh, in those first few hours when they didn't allow people. And we find he is now unconscious. It raises a lot of a terrible question. Huh. What do you make of this uh, State Council? Uh, what's your reading into this? I think that uh, one of the things that probably they are also afraid of is he gave a statement and in the statement he clearly pointed out that he was being um, tortured and uh, uh, being asked questions by those torturers. And the torturers clearly 
were wanting to find out uh, his relationship with former president uh, Ed Kalungu and also who the contacts for former president Ed Kalungu are and according to them who feeds him information, who gives him money. But apart from that, and quite worrying, is he named certain government officials and uh, one uh, UPND party official who he identified and who had come to where he was being held and tortured. And, and one gets the feeling that the state wants to have this information not come out. As his lawyer, have you been able to have a one-on-one -on -one as he divulged certain information that, um, yes, for now, is privileged information? I had for a very brief uh, space of time at the command center. Uh, for maybe about uh, 10, 15 minutes, and they said they needed to start uh, the interview. All right. State Council, thank you. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Savage. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondo. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.